Welcome to New Dentists on the Block, a podcast featuring new dentists sharing their experiences in the world of dentistry. Successes, challenges, and life in between, navigating dentistry together one experience at a time. I'm so excited to share my next guest, who I connected with at Voices of Dentistry. Dr. Avi Patel is a general dentist, speaker, educator, and entrepreneur. He attended NYU College of Dentistry and then practiced in the Northeast for two years before moving to Austin, Texas, where he currently practices. Early in his career, Dr. Avi was burning out on general dentistry before learning about clear aligners. When he first began implementing aligners into his practice, he noticed a major shift not only in his practice and for his patients, but in his life as well. He found that he had more time, income, and a greater sense of fulfillment through this treatment option. Having experienced this, he wanted to share this with colleagues all around the world. Since then, Dr. Avi has become a thought leader in the Clear Aligner space. He is the current CEO and founder of Clear Aligner Advisor, a Clear Aligner consulting company. He regularly posts Clear Aligner tips on his Instagram page, at dr.avi, and on his YouTube channel. Dr. Avi is authentically passionate about empowering dentists to reach their maximum potential in life. His goal is to make clear aligner education accessible to general dentists all over the world and be a positive light for struggling dentists who may feel alone and burnout. Thank you to Between Two Teeth for sponsoring this episode. Let's get to it. All right, welcome to New Dentist on the Block. I am very excited to have Avi Patel with us today, and he is going to talk to us a little bit about his dental experience and a great platform that he has that he calls the Boot Camp. Avi, welcome. Thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about your background and how your experience in dentistry has been since you graduated in 2018. It has been a roller coaster. Um, I graduated NYU in 2018. I did not do a GPR. I did not do an AEGD. I went straight to work. Okay. And so I worked in Connecticut. Mm. And I worked in, um, I was in private practices, a mixed bag between that and DSOs. I actually had about eight associate chips wow. my first two years out. Um, yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of job turnover, but a lot of it was mainly just because they weren't good fits for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Some of the offices, they weren't equipped to have an associate mm -hmm. and we didn't realize that until I was practicing there for like three to four months. Um, not enough patient flow. Mm. Others, um, you know, I was at a place where they brought me on practice was great mm -hmm. and then the owner sold the practice ah. three months later it's a two dentist and then they fired me oh my goodness uh, or he fired me rather um i was uh at a dso or i was at like a medicaid office which is like an hour and 45 minute drive away from mm -hmm. where we were living um because i was just desperate for work right uh um, gotta pay the bills right yeah <laughs> had to that was like the second that was like the second or third job that I had out of school. Um, had to buy a car. We were living in Manhattan and then had to like literally buy a car and wow. then drive out to Connecticut. Wow. That's, that's, I'm assuming that's not what you do in Manhattan. Not many have vehicles or am I mistaken? There? Not many people in okay. Manhattan have cars. Yeah. So I had to like buy and then parking was like 350 bucks a month. Yeah, that New York living is, is different. Yeah. You're not, when you, when you live in New York, you're usually supposed to just work in New York. Right. But. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So, you know, all these opportunities, I feel like it was, I went into every single one of them just like wanting to learn, right? I think every, most new dentists come out wanting to learn. They want a mentor. They want to just continue to get better. And I think that mindset is the right mindset for everybody to have. But what sucks is the reality in that not every dentist you work for is going to want to mentor you. So that was like, that was this like very um, real experience. That's real world experience. Mm -hmm. so you, you're not going to learn that in a GPR. You're right. not going to learn that in AEGD. Um, this is just something you just learn by getting out there by and, doing, and yeah. doing it, right? So I think, you know, when I look back and I tell people that how many practices I've worked at, I'll, you know, it's two types of, two types of uh, basically reactions. One, wow, that's crazy. How'd you do it? And then mm -hmm. the others are just like, oh yeah, that happened to me too. Yeah. I I feel for, for our generation especially, that is 
not uncommon, mm -hmm. sadly. It's very frustrating to see many new dentists that are coming up that are experiencing a lot of the same. And I say unfortunate because uh, that's hard. That's a lot of turnover and there's not a lot of consistency and it can be very stressful. Mm -hmm. I, I can only imagine how stressed you are during that time. Yeah, I think I just tap into this mindset of just, I tend to like, I don't know how healthy it is, but I tend to just, well, I, 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 I things happen, I process and I move on and I try to do it as quickly as possible. Right. I try not to let things bog me down for yeah. too long because you can only control so much right. and if it happened it happened and it's just kind of like okay reflect on it what could you have done better and what do you need to do now to move forward and that's kind of what got me through it's that type of mentality mentality to yeah. push through this stuff and i mean it worked right, right. because i could have sat there i could have right. you know complained right. i could have been bitter um, you know, it definitely did take a toll on me mentally though. Cause sure. I, I yeah. was definitely depressed to some degree of, you know, my expectations of being a dentist were not meeting my reality. Um, you know, you can backtrack to like the reason why I became a dentist and it was, you know, I think the more that I talk about it, it was, it was the lifestyle mm. that I had seen or, or thought that's what I wanted. Right. I right. saw my uncle, he was a dentist, uh -huh. shattered him. And I just saw that like, there was like three pillars, which were, you know, it, you could tell that he was, um, you could tell that his patients like loved his care and treatment. He was making an impact, right? He, fit, he was, he, he seemed like he was fulfilled, mm -hmm. um, by helping other people. Right. Um, and then, you know, he was only working like three or four days a week. So he had time and he was golfing and doing all the stuff, you know, and, a nice lifestyle. And traveling and yeah. spending time with his kids and, and then, you know, he also like, he had money, like he was living right. nice house. Like, you know, he had, he had a nice car and stuff. So I was like, okay, that, that Something looks to good. Aspire to, yeah. yeah. I was like, I'd love to have that. Right. <laughs> Mind you, he was like a, you know, he'd been practicing for like 15 right. years. Right. He, he built up to that. Correct. I didn't see everything before that, right. but that's what I had, you know, kind of like thought of and got in and started working. And then obviously all this turnover, I don't have any of that. I don't feel you know, I was, I didn't have any time. I was working like six days a week in yeah. and out of like different practices, uh, long commutes, wasn't really making good money either because whenever you're new to a practice, mm -hmm. it's it, sometimes it can be hard to build that schedule. Um, and I definitely just didn't feel fulfilled. I was like just burning out on just doing that kind of basic bread and butter right. dentistry. Um, and then the pandemic hit. Mm. And so, yeah. right now everyone's out of a job and we're yeah, all. Our, our generation has seen it. Yeah. We have been through it. Yeah. And, and it's, it's like, it's tough. and like I was just hitting my stride too, I think clinically. Um, mind you, I was burning out, but I was like, I was in that kind of like tier of confidence. And then so during the pandemic is when I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to reflect and just why do I hate what I'm doing and right. what can I do to, to improve? And so I started just investing in myself and investing in education. Yeah. And so I learned, uh, I took an implant course and then I also just like dove into like aligners. So I was already certified for Invisalign. Mm -hmm. So I just like started watching those modules and I was like, I watched their online modules and I was like, when, when we go back to practice, like I want to do this. Right. But the two practices I was at, um, neither one of them really wanted me mm -hmm. to implement it. Uh, one owner actually told me that aligners are not a profitable procedure. Ah. And he just wanted me to refer and just do root canals. Interesting. Yeah, which is incorrect. <laughs> yeah. Was, who was he getting his information from? Yeah, he, he, was, he had a pretty big like ego and yeah. it was kind of like his way or the highway. So, okay, no problem. So then my wife and I ended up moving to Austin. So moved to Austin and then that's where I was at a DSO. Okay. And we, uh, the DSO was great in the sense where like they supported me. They're like, yeah, whatever you want to do, go for it. You know, they had an Itero scanner, they had an implant system. They're like, knock yourself dead, do whatever you want. And I was like, sweet. And like, I hit the ground running. Like I started placing implants. I was doing like posteriors, like very like safe stuff. So that was slowly ramping up. Uh, but aligners, I did 50 cases in my first six months. Wow. So yeah, I just and every, yeah hit the ground running with yeah, that. Yeah, and everyone's usually just like, "Oh, how'd you do it?" And it's like I I focused more on the oral health. Mm -hmm. I wasn't pushing cosmetics. I right. was pushing the oral health and the importance of straight teeth, and that resonated with the patients. And um, I didn't I didn't really look back. And then what I started to do is I started to get those three things back in life. I had more time because mm -hmm. when you're doing aligners, it's not really like a laborious procedure. 
like fillings, root canals, crowns, implants. It's pretty, it's a lot hands off and it's more just, right, getting the case acceptance, setting up the case, and then you're like polishing composite. Like that's the only time you're really in, in the mouth. Um, so I had time, I had more money because aligners are like $5,000 a case. Very profitable. So that was very profitable. And then um, I felt fulfilled. Like I was doing dentistry that I felt was making a difference for my patients. And I could see it. And like my patients were telling me about it. Like they were saying that they're actually taking care of their, you know, taking care of their teeth. They're actually flossing now. So I was like, wow, this is amazing. Um, so I started to love dentistry again. And then at that point, I was like, all right, I want to share this with other people. Right. Yeah. So then I started teaching okay. uh, coworkers. Okay. And so one of my coworkers was a dentist that had been practicing for like 20 years. He was an owner. And then at this DSO, he was an associate and um, he was open to learning. So basically taught him everything I knew and we kind of grew together as well. But then he started doing like 10, 12 cases a month. And then I was, uh, I had some other friends in the DSO and I was helping out them with their cases. And then I was like, you know what, let me just like spend more time doing this. Yeah. So I went to the leadership team at the DSO and I asked them if I could just have like an official role, like yeah. director of aligners or something like that, sure. because they had like 30 offices and they said they saw the value in it, but they didn't want me to do that. They just wanted me to focus on producing in the chair. So with that, uh, my wife actually told me, she's like, why don't you just start a consulting yeah. business? And so then I was just like, Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. I was like, I have no idea how to do that, but let's go for it. Yeah. So then I started consulting and then I was teaching dentists that had no experience, um, zero cases a month to doing like 25 cases in the wow. first two months. So that's huge. Yeah. And it was, it was all just feeling like really good, really aligned for me. That's a, that's a good pun there. Yeah. A great. Good play, play on words. Yeah. That was good. Um, <laughs> Uh, and it just, uh, it felt great to just teach like that. And, yeah. and I know, and I knew that the skills that they were getting, like it wasn't just moving teeth, like it was going to change the way that they practice. And then at that point I was like, okay, I want to teach as many people as I can. Mm -hmm. Cause this stuff is like, the world needs to know about this. Right. That's the mindset that I had. And I couldn't do that with one-on-one -on -one consulting. So then I pivoted to an online training program and the, that's what we have today is uh it's an online training program it is about like nine modules about four hours of content dentists can watch it at their own pace it takes you through everything a to z on how to do aligners and it's for the general dentist by a general dentist so That's I, awesome. yeah so i i'm not taking on crazy cases it right. is very simple but it's like an effective implementation just system that you can take and implement it and then I also do monthly like Q and A coaching calls. Oh, cool! So that way there's someone there to kind of you know hold your hand um, whenever things come up because that's how it worked for me. I, I had a mentor, Dr. Blocker. She kind of helped me when I first started. Mm -hmm. I would go to her with questions about cases and little things like that, and you know just super grateful for her help. And and that's you know it's 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 something that I'm also now kind of looking to give back in this way where you know. Dentists who are wanting to start and who want something, maybe they want something new, a uh, new procedure because they're bored of what they're doing. Maybe they want more income, you know, or, or maybe they're trying to find a way to differentiate themselves as like a, you know, a candidate, whether it be an associate or an owner, you know, looking to kind of get into aligners. Um, those are the people that I, you know, wanted to help and that I am helping. So it's, yeah, it's awesome. And ever since then, I have just been focusing on that. And now I clinically practice two days a week. Mm -hmm. And then I use the rest of the time to focus on, on the online business. Um, yeah. That's huge. Uh, if there's a new dentist who is interested in in incorporating aligners into their practice or into a practice that they're joining, what's the first step that you would encourage them to do other than, of course, you know, take, taking the boot camp? Yeah. Uh, but what, you know, what, what um, what's the financial investment that they're, they're looking at? What would you say a, a rough estimate? Yeah. Um, so I think like you have to make sure that you have a scanner or okay. access to a scanner, yep. right? Cause if you're doing like alginate impressions, just or PVS impressions, whatever it is that you like, just don't do impressions for aligners. Like get it, make sure you're in a place with the scanner from an associate position. Um, you know, then I would say, I mean, 
honestly, like I also put out like a lot of free content. So I could put out a lot of tips and tricks on my Instagram mm -hmm. uh, and my YouTube page. They can start there. So it's all free just to get some exposure, get an idea of like how to start, how yeah. to start talking about it, how to do it to a certain degree. Um, and then whenever, yeah, they want to jump into the program, um, then they're more than welcome to. Do you help Dennis recognize and determine what cases are appropriate for them to, to treat and which ones maybe oh, are? Yeah, okay. Definitely. And most of the cases uh, are like, you can do them in like six to eight months. So I teach, I teach my, I teach basically how to take on predictable cases okay. and how to be efficient with it while still achieving a good result and improving the patient's oral health. Um, I'm not taking on class threes. I'm not taking right. on like the bilateral, crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah, posterior cross, but it's like, it's very like predictable stuff that aligners work with. Um, and so for me, it's kind of like a no brainer. It's like, well, why isn't everybody doing this? Right. You shared that it's, um, well, you shared with me earlier that it is system agnostic, mm -hmm. meaning that you can incorporate this knowledge to any system. W yep. Was that what you meant by that? Yep. Um, so that being said, um, you know there are a lot of systems that are around how do you how do you start differentiating them one from the other like what what makes one stand out what should you be looking for i guess yeah um it all depends on the practice i think so you know some some systems they're very like integrated top down like what scanner you have right so like if you want to do invisalign aligners then like you pretty much can only do it with an itero mm. scanner you want to do another brand like Clear Correct? Um, they are like open platform, so right. any scanner works. Yep. Um, but then the other thing too, right, is like what degree of like case difficulty mm. do you want to take on? Right. So I don't do crazy cases, but if you want to do more advanced stuff, then I would do a little more research and maybe go with more of like the proven brands that are out there, um, because there's going to be a lot more um, predictability. Uh, I can't fully speak on that but that's just how i would go about that conversation um you know and then a lot of them i think it comes down to just what you like what works for you and like the support right um if you have some of these some of the aligner brands like they all have different support levels and so some of them if it's just kind of like minimal support on the back end maybe don't go with that right okay um, you know and I, I would talk to other dentists like right. just Their get experience yeah and but don't talk to the ones who have only done like five cases just right talk to the ones who are like <laughs> actively doing it um with each brand because every brand has doctors that have right like a lot of cases right. that they're doing and the quickest way to do that is like let's say you're looking at handed reveal clear correct invisalign you know, sure smile. Right. If you really are want to do your due diligence, like when you talk, reach out to those reps and then ask them to put you in contact with a dentist that is doing a lot of cases mm -hmm. and then just have a dentist to dentist conversation with that provider and just ask them, like, what are your thoughts? Have you used any other system? Right. Like, what do you like about this? What don't you like about it? What do you wish? You know, great. It's like you do that. Um, you're just going to get more perspective. And I just think a lot of dentists, sometimes we just get shy about mm -hmm. asking questions. For sure. And like, yeah. you think everyone's like trying to compete, but like, it's yeah. not the case. Like you just need, to, I mean, just being here at this conference, like everyone's like so easy to talk to. Yeah. Su super supportive too. You know, and, lots of support. In yeah. You just got to ask. And that's what I'm realizing. Also, it's like, I'm also trying to be a part of that movement of like creating more community, mm -hmm. uh, sharing resources, sharing information, because if if us dentists can't even trust each other to give each other right. honest advice, then like that's a problem. I have a, a personal question. You know, I work yeah. in, in public health and would love, 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 love to do aligners. It would be huge for a lot of um, the patients that we serve. How can, can you keep costs low if you try and incorporate aligners in a public health setting? What what, what are your what are your that's thoughts good, on that? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it comes down to obviously like the biggest thing that you have to control like you can obviously control like price mm -hmm. but the lab fee right right and like a lot of these liner companies they're starting to have like similar pricing in their like structures mm -hmm. which is around that like eighteen hundred dollar one eighteen hundred dollar price point and then if you do like a certain volume they'll give you like volume discounts so oh, if see. you do like 50 cases in six right. months it'll have a lower price um and then it's just kind of like, 
it's hard, I think, to drop the price to, let's say, like two grand for like a comprehensive case that's going to take time and a higher lab bill. Because if you're charging the patient two grand and the lab fee is 1800 bucks, it's $200. For like a significant amount of work right. in terms of yeah. time, right? Like right. it's going to take a lot of chair time. So it's tough. I think like, I don't know. How do you get, do you guys do a lot of other like bigger procedures or um, higher ticket items or no. not really? Some, sometimes, you know, it, it, it just depends on, on the patient. Um, sometimes people will come in and it's very, very rare. They're, they're ready to go for something that's, that's on the higher level, higher scale, but usually not. So that's, that's where my, my question was, is if this is something that we could, potentially scale for some of our low income patients who you know this could be transformational for them oh, yeah. uh, it's it's hard it's hard to get any of them into ortho um just because of the cost factor yeah um what is like the highest like most expensive i guess procedure that you would say that you've been able to like confidently offer yeah your patients? so so we don't place implants but okay. we have a periodontist who will give our patients half off which mm. is huge so, you know, implants is probably the biggest and an implant supported denture is uh, probably the biggest thing that we've been able to, to, I guess, so that's provide. So that's around what, like 3,000, 2,000, 4,000? Um, I, I think, so this, this is probably an exception, but she said that in total with, um, she did four implants on the top, four on the bottom and the two prosthetics. I think she said she ended up pay paying like 12K. Okay. Yeah. But I would say that that's. And that was one patient or that's. That's one patient. Mm. Yeah, that's one patient. Yeah. That's the exception, not the rule. For yeah. sure. Because I feel like you could go into like a volume-based model with right. aligners by dropping it down. But like, I don't think you could really charge less than like 4000 Okay. But yeah, you can so break it up the... into payment, right? Like you, right. It doesn't yeah, have yeah, to be sure. 4000 up front. Like you can, there are right. options to make it more accessible. Like you could do 24 months, right? With like mm -hmm. zero interest and stuff like that. And yeah. I get it's tough also for, because I've been in offices like, you, you you shared yeah the the Medicaid office yeah and it's in. like I get it like some people like literally just don't have it which right. is which is a shame yeah it's it's hard yeah. it's hard um, where do you hope to scale the boot camp How, what what does the future look for for you and for the boot camp so for the boot camp I would I mean my goal is I'm a very I'm a big dreamer um, so I don't like to limit myself but I would like for it to be you know number one worldwide clear liner training program for general dentists that are looking to start right, right? I, I i'm not standing here saying i am a master orthodontist i am a general dentist who has found success doing you know straightforward cases and right. i figured out the entire implementation process and i feel like there's value in that for anybody looking to start sure and then it's kind of like choose your own adventure after that if you have a deep passion for it and you want to learn more and you want to do elastics and all that go for it uh, but yeah, my goal for the program itself is to be um, just kind of known as like, I mean, it'd be sweet if somebody could graduate dental school. And yeah, then, that's that's where know, my thoughts are. And then like, and then if like their first CE that they yeah it would be yeah. something. Well, my my thoughts actually were to you know it'd be cool to see this in the schools, especially oh yeah you know like I would, an elective or something. I, I mean, I, you know how it goes at the schools, but it would be something to yeah. dream and aspire to. Yeah, maybe I'll write a book and. The book the schools can have the book and that's I'll right. be like a guest lecturer or something like that <laughs> yeah that would be huge yeah so I, I haven't asked a whole lot of fun questions but yeah. tell me what you do uh, for fun tell me uh, yeah what do you do for fun other yeah. than than all your cool projects like than this? all these projects yeah. yeah uh for fun i like to um i like to go on walks honestly nice. yeah like we uh we live in downtown austin so we're nice right place by, to be yeah, yeah we're right by the lake okay. um so just like yeah doing just like a nice walk around the lake is great. Uh, they work out. Um, love trying like taco spots. Nice. Uh, You're in Texas. You got to do it, right? Yeah. T tacos <laughs> and margaritas. I'm actually, yeah, hoping they got some margaritas. Oh, I hope here. so. I hope so. Um, I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's that. What else do I do? It's crazy because my life has changed a lot in the last like year and a half. Um, I started taking like personal development a lot more serious. Um, so just kind of prioritizing like physical health, mental health. Good for you. Um, thank you. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's been great cause it's, you know, changed the way that I do things. Right. And it's, and it's, um, kind of, I've learned more about myself mm -hmm. and the things that I actually enjoy as opposed to like 
what my friends enjoy right. and what I just kind of tag along for. Um, so yeah, I just, I think I like to spend time with my wife and dog and That's nice. yeah. And just be present. I try to be as present as possible. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I also read books. I started reading. That's great. I wasn't I, a big reader before. Yeah. I think that's that's a big part of uh, personal development. I, and I'm glad that you have made time for yourself. I think that a lot of dentists don't make time for themselves. And, you know, yeah. it leads to burnout. It leads to mental stress and anxiety. And so I think that's fantastic. One last piece of advice that you have to share for new dentists out there? Yeah, I think for new dentists, like, don't put yourself in a box. Right. And don't put yourself in a box and don't think that you have to be like another dentist that's out there. Um, I think the biggest thing is recognizing that like you are unique as an individual and you can do whatever you want. Well, that if our listeners want to connect with you, what's the best way? Yeah. Easiest way. Uh, just hit me up on Instagram. It's dr.avi. And uh, yeah, shoot me a DM and I'm more than happy to give you any advice if you need any or if you just want to follow along and watch my content and yeah, yeah. watch you grow. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Avi, thanks. Thank you so much for your time. And I'm happy to have had you here and, and I appreciate you sharing your knowledge with our listeners. And I, I also look forward to seeing uh, how you scale this and how you grow as a, as a person. Yeah, thank you so much. It was, right. uh, it was awesome to be on. Thank you so much. And tune in next time for another episode. Thank you for joining me on this episode in speaking with Dr. Avi. If you'd like to connect with him, you can find him on Instagram at dr.avi. You can find more about his Clear Aligner course on his Instagram. If you'd like to connect with New Dennis on the Block, you can find us on Instagram at New Dennis on the Block. If you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram at tsmyss.dds. A huge shout out to Between Two Teeth for sponsoring this episode. Please continue to subscribe and rate our podcast. If you know a new dentist that you'd like to see on the podcast, feel free to share that information on our Instagram page. We'll catch you on the next episode. A huge shout out to Between Two Teeth for sponsoring this episode.